Morning, everyone. And welcome to our worship here in Eglis this Sunday morning. It's good to be able to gather together and to praise the Lord and give him the worship he's due. You're very welcome, whether you're here in person or joining us online. It's good to have you with us. And we trust we know God's blessing as we worship him together. Uh, just a few announcements I want to highlight as we begin. They're all on the announcements sheet, but <clears throat> excuse me, a few I'll highlight. First of all, to say that next Sunday we celebrate communion. So that's 12 o'clock. We have our communion service uh, next Sunday morning. And then Youth Fellowship also restarts again next Sunday. Um, next week it's in the Atchison Hall. Then two weeks later it's here in Eglish. Uh, but next week, half past seven to, to nine, that's for all children of secondary school age, very much encouraged to attend uh, Youth Fellowship. And then finally to mention at the bottom, Impact 22, which is a, a week of events Casa Caulfield are, are hosting in mid-October. You're very much encouraged and invited along to them as well. Uh, the dates are there, the 15th to 23rd. Uh, so can I encourage you to put, your, put the dates in your diary and be praying for God's blessing on the events of, of that week, uh, that God would use it to, to lead people to Christ and that... Um, that would be a time of blessing uh, for both our congregations that week. But this week we have our Back to School with God uh, Sunday service. And as we begin, I suppose it's, it's a, a week, an exciting week for many um, as children start school or, or go back to school or, or maybe go to a new school. And as we begin, I want to read just a few verses, or a verse here from Luke 10, 27. Our, our, our service will be shaped around this wider passage today, the story of the Good Samaritan. And in it, we read these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So let's pray. Father God, we praise you that you are the, the Lord of all, that you are the, the great God, the, the great King above all gods, that you're the, the living God and the God of all love. And we pray that you would remind us of your incredible love for us and for those around us this morning. Your love is patient and kind. It doesn't envy or boast. Your love is not proud and doesn't dishonor others. It keeps no record of wrongs. It doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Your love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. We praise you that your love never fails. Help us to experience your love today. We thank you that you do not leave us guessing how we are to live as your followers, but you show us in how Christ lived his life. Help us to follow his example and his commands as we explore your word today. Teach us and shape us by your spirit that we would love others, knowing that when we do so, that we show our love for you. As we start another year of school life and in church life as well, we want to give ourselves to you and seek your plans and purposes every day. So have your way in us and through us in our worship and then as we go from this place. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand to sing together, Jesus, Prince and Saviour.
We're now going to read God's Word together. We read from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. And our three readers are Adam, Darcy, and, and Micah. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell in the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, I Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. When he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of those three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Thanks guys, well done. And Owen will lead us in the next part of the service. Okay, everyone. Um, hopefully I'm all on there. Um, okay, so we're going to get everybody to stand up and we're going to do a few would you rather. So everyone on their feet. So it's going to be an A or a B option. So if it's A, I'm going to get you to pat your head. If, it's, if you choose B, rub your stomachs. Okay. Um, so we've got the first one here on the screen. Uh, would you rather give up all your TV and computer time for a year or B, give up and lis- uh, give up listening to any kind of music for a year. So A or B. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I that that seems fairly even split. Okay. So next one is: Would you rather be able to read very fast, or would you rather be able to run very fast? So A or B. Yeah. Okay, so a few few readers, some some runners. Okay, and next one is: Would you rather get up early, or would you rather have a long lie in? Okay, yeah, I'm with you there. With you there. Okay. Next one and final one is: Would you rather be able to draw stories that come to life? Or would you rather write stories that become true? Draw or write? Okay. Yeah, I'd agree. I would much rather do it quickly by writing it out rather than taking ages uh, drawing out. Okay, thank you very much. Sit down again. Sit down again. Okay, so we've started here, we've started thinking about questions. And in our story today, um, we come up to another question. Um, I wonder if in school or work or uh, wherever you might find yourself, boys and girls in particular, in school, 
Are you the kind of person who asks lots of questions? I know me, I probably asked a lot of questions because a lot of the time I didn't know what the teacher was on about. Sorry, any teachers out there, I just didn't, didn't get it. But asking questions is such a good thing because it makes things clearer if we don't understand. Um, if, if, we get thing, if we think we know what it means and we're not quite sure, it clarifies that for us. It helps us to really, really know what is right. And in today's question, this teacher of the law came to Jesus and asked this, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or if I put this in easier terms, it's, he's really wanting to ask, what do I need to do to go to heaven? This is a good question. Just as all questions are good, this is a good question indeed. But it wasn't genuine. He already knew the answer. You see, this was a teacher of the law, which means that the first five books of the Bible, which contains the, the, most of the laws for the, old, for the Jewish people, were there. He knew them inside and out. So if there was an exam on the law, he would have got really high marks. He, would have been the, he is the expert in, when it comes to these kind of things. Now, I know some of you are experts as well, um, I know who, hands up, who knows everything that there is. Now, this would be more my Micah. He, he would probably know more than me. About dinosaurs? Anyone? No. What about Lego? Any Lego experts out there? Yeah, yeah, there's a few hands up. Uh, what about farming? Who's the farming experts? No? Yeah? <laughs> Great job. Okay. Go into school subjects. Who likes history over geography? Uh, okay, a few historians, a few geography. And who would rather sport to any other kind of academic stuff in school? A few hands up. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be out in the, in the playing fields myself. Okay, so many of you are experts in whatever it is that you really, really like. And in the game show Pointless, they also get kids that ask questions. And these ones in particular can be really, really difficult. I don't have any examples here uh, because we don't have time for them. But children, you guys are really, really knowledgeable. You know lots of things about what you really like. And the same is with this man. Whenever he has asked this question, he knows what he's on about. He is, isn't just doing this to find out more from Jesus. He's there to test him or maybe to catch him out, to say, You're, you can't be the son of God because you don't know what the Bible says. But Jesus already knew this. Jesus knows everything about us, about what we think, about we, what we say and what we do, whether that's in public or whether that's in private, in our own homes. Jesus knows it all. And whenever this man's come and asked this, Jesus knows what his intention says. And that's why he asks, what do you think? What does the Bible say? And so the man comes back and says, um, oh, I'm in the wrong bit. Uh, let's see, is it up there? Uh, yeah, what must I do to her eternal life? Go to the next one, Jeff. Uh, yes, yeah, so love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. This is what the Bible teaches. This is what the Bible says we must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus says, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a good answer. Uh, and it clearly shows that he knows what he's on about. This is the golden rule. This is what this answer is given, the title of the golden rule. And he knows that God asks us to love him and to love other people too. Now, the, the man had asked the question, he had, gotten, he had given the answer himself because Jesus knew what was in his heart. So the man tried to trick Jesus, he tried to test him, and he didn't get the result he liked. So he asked another question. He asked, who is my neighbor? I wonder how you would answer this question. In fact, let's, let's get a few answers. Who would you say 
your neighbor is, anybody at all. Who's your neighbor? Yes. Pardon? Heinz Burns. Heinz Burns, that's your neighbor, yes. Uh, any other ideas? What, so that'd be the person who lives beside you. Okay, who else could be our neighbor, do you think? Yes, Micah? Yes, in class. So at the minute, Adam is your neighbor here in school. Um, or there could be someone else who sits beside you in your class at school. They are your neighbor. Yes, they, those are all good answers and right answers. But there's so much more to this. More to this question. And the religious leader uh, said, gives, knows that in the law, where he just found the answer he gave, there's another passage, and it's Deuteronomy 24 and verse 19, that says, you might be gathering your harvest in the field. You might not see a bundle of grain. Don't go back and get it. Leave it there for the foreigners, the orphans, and the widows. Then the Lord, your God, can bless everything that you do. So the challenge in this verse isn't that we need to be constantly looking after the person next door to us. That's a really good thing to do. And if you do that, that is, that is the right thing to do. But it goes even beyond that. It's, it's bigger than that again. It's talking about more than just the immediate person beside you. It's a call for us to help everyone who is in need. This man already knew that God want, what God wanted him to do. But Jesus saw more than that. He saw it into his heart, as we were talking about earlier. He knew what was on this man's heart and that the law had to go deeper in his life. It had to overflow in his life. He knows that God was his creator. He knew what God had done for everything to come into place for that very moment to be. We were thinking last week about how God had created everything and what everything truly meant. But that wasn't having an effect in this man's life. It should flow from the love of God for caring for one another and we have to realize how much God loves us. Do we realize how much God loves us? Does it overflow in our lives? Do we show how grateful we are to God by what we think and what we say and what we do? We know that God loved us so much that he gave us his one and only son to die on the cross so that we can be saved. Are you grateful for it? Do you realize how much it costs Jesus to come to earth to do that? And do you share that good news with those that you meet in school? And that is a challenge for all of us, whether you're in school, whether you're in work, university, no matter where you find yourself in your day-to-day life, that is your challenge, to share that good news in whatever way you're able with others. We're going to leave the story here for now and Mark will continue to the thought a bit later on uh, but we're going to stand and sing together that path, that one that I forgot to give it what which it is again give me joy in my heart sorry I keep forgetting it today so let's stand and sing this together
Okay, what I want to think a wee bit about now, at least to begin with, is just rules. So there's all rules in life. There's certainly rules in schools. What kind of rules do you have in school? Maybe you have golden rules. What do you have that schools say you can or, or can't do? Any rules? Holly. Have to walk in the left hand side of the corridor, yeah. Anything else? Connie was telling me they got lots of rules the other day starting a new school. Darcy? Having a healthy break. Having a healthy snack, yeah. You aren't allowed chocolate bars uh, or stuff like that. You need healthy stuff, yeah, Micah? That's a very important one, isn't it? No talking when the teacher's talking. Yeah. Darcy? Put your hand up to speak. Yes, put your hand up to speak. Holly? No, no, what's it? Oh, no, not products. Yes. No, not products. Another important one. Yeah. Anything else? Sammy? Not allowed to beat the children anymore. <laughs> not allowed to beat the children anymore. Yeah. Anything else? Not allowed to write. Not allowed to write over your books. Yep. Yeah. Can't make a mess wherever you like. Not allowed to write in the walls either. <laughs> Anything else? So lots of lots of rules in school. And today we've been thinking about what what are sometimes called the golden rules in the Bible. Love the Lord your God and your neighbour as yourself. So there were rules that we're thinking about today. Love God and love your neighbor. And Jesus was teaching these to this expert in the law. Now we're going to think for a wee moment about some dingbats. Now usually these are the kind of things that make me go, oh, because I'm not very good at them. Um, but they're these things, used to be a program on TV, I'm telling the younger ones, called Catchphrase. Uh, just be on a Saturday night about 6 o'clock. Uh, and you had to say what you see. And so they're going to come up and you need to say what you see and see if we can figure out what these dingbats are saying here. Any ideas? Sammy? Head over heels. Head over heels, good. Yeah. Next one. Connie? Sweet tooth. Sweet tooth. Yep, sweet tooth. Uh huh. Next one. Musical chairs, yeah. Yes, so fun in the sun. I think the last one. Micah knows it from Castle Caulfield. Anyone else? <laughs> Good afternoon, yes. Okay, one last one. Medical people should know this. Yes, Joel. Cost an arm and leg. Cost an arm and leg, thank you. Yeah. So they're all about seeing what's there. And sometimes it involves a bit of thought. So there's kind of maybe something that you see to begin with, but then as you think about it, you realize there's more to what's there. And that's a wee bit like the parables that Jesus told. Jesus told a story. So today, we've read the story about the Good Samaritan. It, it's not something that happened in real life, but it's part of a story that Jesus told. But as Jesus told the story, he wanted the people to see the deeper meaning to it. He wanted them to realize he was saying more than perhaps they first had picked up. Now, Jesus was the best teacher of all, and he often told stories to help teach people things. And he was telling this story to this expert in the law. And it was a story that was told to make the man think. It was a parable with a hidden meaning. And he told the, man, the story about a man on a journey. So there, I come up on the screen. So he's telling the story to the experts in the law there. And the story was about a man on a journey. So there's the man on a journey. 
Uh, and he was a Jewish man traveling from Jerusalem, the capital city, to Jericho. Uh, and this character would have been instantly recognized by the expert in the law that Jesus was speaking to. He would have known people who'd made that journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. Maybe he'd done it himself. So he would have known that people make that journey. He was a man just like the expert in the law. It was a very famous road, not always for good reasons. It was known as the way of blood. Well, that doesn't sound like a very nice road, the way of blood. But it was rocky, it was barren, it was steep, and it was well known for its danger. Now, has anyone, is anyone a fan or has anyone ever read any Julia Donaldson books? Yeah. Well, we've read a lot of them in our house, and they're all these kind of rhyming stories. And there's one that was very popular called The Highway Rat. And it starts like this. The highway rat was a baddie. The highway rat was a beast. He took what he wanted and ate what he took. His life was one long feast. So there's this highway rat, and he attacked people and took usually their food and ate it for himself. Now, it was just a story, but it was based upon people who are called highway robbers, who would have attacked people in the olden days. Maybe um, in the olden days, people would have been walking somewhere on a journey, and people would have attacked them to take their money or take their valuables or take whatever they had. They were highway robbers. Well, this man was attacked by these guys who were highway robbers. They jumped on him. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him up. Then they ran off. And then the next slide. There was the man who was left half dead. He was hurt all alone. I wonder if you've ever been in a situation where you've needed someone to help you. This year, I realized it's 25 years since I passed my driving test. And over those years, I've broken down a number of times, and I've needed someone to come and help me. So usually I phone the AA, and the man in the van comes, sorts out whatever needs fixed, and I get going again. I needed someone to help me in that situation. Well, more than me needing help when my car broke down, this man, the man in our story, needed help. There he was. If we go back to the last slide, he'd been left all alone, left for dead in the sun, lying where he was. He was hurt and in very real danger. But then if we move on again, who should come along but a priest? A priest, the minister of a synagogue. Now, what would you expect a minister to come and do? Adam. Help you. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you would hope would happen. And that's what the expert in the law expected would have happened when Jesus was telling the story and Jesus said, along came a priest. The man would have expected. The next part of the story was, and he helped the man who needed help. But that's not what happens. Instead, the priest just walks on by. He walks on past. But if we move on to the next slide, not only that, but then the priest's assistant, a Levite, does the very same thing. He walks on by. Imagine you were an expert in the law listening to this story. How would you react to all this? Well, you'd be shocked. You'd be surprised. You'd be thinking... That's exactly the opposite to what we would have expected. We would have expected the priest to help the man, and we would have expected the Levite to help the man. They were good men. They were worshippers of God. They were upstanding citizens or people that everyone looked up to. Why didn't they help? Why did they pass on by? Any ideas? Why do you think they passed by? Micah. That was quite possible. Maybe they might have thought, 
well, if I stop to help him, the robbers who attacked him, they'll attack me. So that's possible. Any other ideas? Holly? Maybe he didn't want to get his hands dirty, or, the, or the, maybe they didn't want to get their hands dirty, the priests and the Levites, yeah? Connie? They were selfish. Maybe. Maybe they were just plain selfish. Any, anything else? Well, Jesus doesn't tell us. But maybe they were afraid of being attacked. Maybe they were afraid of becoming unclean by touching a dirty, smelly, injured person. Or maybe they were just too busy. Maybe they had a meeting to go to, an appointment to go to, and they thought, I can't stop and help this man or I'll be late for my meeting. Or I can't stop and help this man or I'll miss my busy, my important appointment. Maybe they thought, of other things to do, I'll ignore him and walk on. I wonder if we're ever like them. Do we ever get so caught up in what we were planning and doing that we forget the needs of others? So concerned about what, what we think we need to do that we forget about others. Or maybe we think, well, someone else will come along and deal with the problem. Maybe there's a mess that needs tidied up and we think, well, somebody else will look after it. Or maybe at, at work or at school, there's somebody in need in some way, or even just out in the street, and we just think, I'm busy. I don't, I, I'm rushing. I need to keep going and walk on past. Because that's what the priest did and the Levite did. But as we look at the story, we see there was someone who didn't walk past, someone who didn't rush on by. But the surprising thing, or the, or the startling thing in the story, is this that the person who didn't walk past, the person who didn't ignore him, was the man's enemy. Was the very person you would have expected to have walked past. Someone the expert in the law would have despised, would have looked down on. The last person the expert in the law would have expected to have given help here. And the helper was a Samaritan. Now the Samaritans were the traditional enemies of the Jews. He maybe thought, could have thought, well, I have a good reason to pass by. I'm not helping that Jew. He, he wouldn't help me. But he didn't. He saw a person, a person who needed help, and he stopped. I wonder, is there anyone who you would maybe choose to pass by? Someone who you maybe don't get on with? Someone who you don't, maybe don't talk to, someone who you've maybe fallen out with at some point, and they maybe need help, but you think, well, I'm just going to leave them to someone else. Somebody else will help them. I'm not helping them. Jesus told the story to challenge the expert in the law, but it challenges us as well. Because in the parable, the injured man, well, he represents anyone who's different from us. He isn't part of our group, isn't part of our our crowd. So what would it look like for us to help someone who we wouldn't want to help? Someone who's maybe seen as our enemy or someone who might see us as their enemy in some way, whether we've fallen out with them or don't get on. What does that look like to help them? Well, here's the Samaritan. Next slide. And his help was extravagant. It was amazingly generous. He shared his donkey, he spent his money, he gave of his time. And he didn't just give him a bit of first aid, put a plaster on and said, there's a plaster, all the best. He went far beyond what would have been considered reasonable. Verse 33 tells us he took pity on the man or he, he was moved with compassion. It's a radical love, a challenging love. It's a love that steps into the mess here. It's a love that didn't count the cost. The man here wasn't thinking, this has cost me so much money. This is using up all my time. This is putting me in danger. He wasn't thinking that. He was just showing love to the man who needed help. I wonder, does that remind you of anyone else? Of someone else who stepped into the mess? And didn't count the cost. 
and didn't think, this is costing me everything I have. Who, who did something like that? Well, Jesus did, didn't he? Because Jesus stepped into the mess of this world. Jesus left the glory of heaven and came to the earth and went all the way to the cross for us, for our sin. Jesus gave all he had. He gave his very life for us. So we could be forgiven. So we could be restored into relationship with God. That we could be saved. Jesus set aside his own comfort. He went to the cross. He paid the price for sin. Of those who didn't deserve his love. Those who didn't deserve his forgiveness. But Jesus did that for you and me. So that by faith in him, we could be forgiven and welcomed into God's family. Jesus gave himself all he had for us. Jesus did that. And then how does he end the story that he tells this expert in the law? Well, he says, go and do likewise. What was Jesus wanting the expert in the law to do? He was wanting him to love like he loves. Final slide then. He was calling the teacher and us to love God with all our hearts, number one, and then to love our neighbor as ourselves. God's golden rules. Love God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. Amen. We're going to pray together and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to pray and I'd like you to join in the part where it says, help us to love you and love our neighbor. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your great love for us in Jesus, who left the glory of heaven to die on a cross bearing our sins and being resurrected to glory. Help us to love you and love our neighbor. We confess that we are like the expert in the law. We are so often self-righteous and proud, with hearts that are far from pleasing you. Please forgive us. Help us to love you and love our neighbor. Thank you for the parable of the Good Samaritan. Help us to be good neighbors. May we reach out to others with joy compassion and kindness flowing out of love for you. Help us to love you and love our neighbor. Heavenly Father, strengthen and bless those who are going back to school. May they know that you love them, that you go with them, that you're ready to help them each day. Help them to love you and love their neighbor. Amen. Our closing hymn speaks of God's love for us and how that prompts us to love others in return. My heart is filled with thankfulness to him who bore my pain. Let's stand together.
space we say this. We're going to close in prayer before the benediction. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessing of being able to join in worship today. And for the call you've given us through Christ your Son. The call to love you with all our heart and soul and strength and mind. And to love our neighbour as ourselves. We've prayed today for those who have gone back to school in recent days. And we rem- remember especially those in our congregation who have started school for the first time. As well as those who have moved on to a new school or who are moving on to college or university. We thank you for each one and pray that you bless them and help them to settle quickly and to make good friends in their new places of study. We pray also for those from our congregation who work as staff in our schools, teachers, classroom assistants, or ancillary staff. Help them and use them in your service. Help them as they seek to honour you by doing their job to the best of their ability. Bless also those who work as governors, that they will be granted wisdom for the important task that they have. We thank you also for volunteers who give of their time and resources to help in schools. We pray also and thank you for the opportunities you give for the good news of Jesus to be shared in schools. And we pray for those who who will go in to take lessons or assemblies, or SU groups, or other activities in schools. Fill them with your spirit as they serve you in school, that much fruit would come as your word is taught. We pray for your blessing on all our schools and places of learning. May there be places where our children and young people feel safe and happy, and are enabled to learn well, and grow as the people you've made them to be. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is the best teacher of all. Help us all, whatever age we are, to listen to you and become more and more like your son. For it's in his name we pray. And I invite you to stand for the benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.